So let's talk a little bit about poly painting and materials. They kind of go hand in hand and poly painting isn't all that different from sculpting. So what we're going to do is let's temporarily, you know what, let's go ahead and just do file, save as, and we'll call this, go to my ZBrush core, Z projects, my demo folder, and we'll just call this core here. So we have it to come back to. I'm going to hit the comma key and we're going to go to project and we're going to load up none of the dynamesh spheres. We're going to go to polysphere. And if I click polyframe on and I go down here to geometry, you're going to see it already has subdivision levels. So if I can crank, I can crank these up and down. I'm going to go ahead and do delete higher. So we just have this one. If you want to, ah, there is no reconstruct. So this is as far down as we're going to go. That's okay. So if I go in here and I start sculpting, you're going to see we're deforming the surface. That's because I have Z add turned on for my default standard brush. If I turn off Z add and turn on RGB, now we're painting. So two things you need to be aware of is turning on RGB to paint with a brush and also this little paintbrush icon turns its colorize on and off. And I don't see a poly paint menu down here, so you're just gonna have to be aware that this turns colorize on and off, which just means you're just painting on the surface. So the cool thing about that is if you just have uh, you know RGB selected, or if you go down here to the paintbrush which is looks like it's just RGB turned on with RGB intensity to zero. As soon as you start painting, it's going to turn that on for you. So you know that you are painting on uh, the surface. Now, of course, I'm painting white on a white surface. You're not going to see much. If I change that to a red color and start painting, you're going to see, okay, now I'm painting red color. If I drop that Z in, or that RGB intensity down, you're going to see it's, uh, you know, just kind of fading in some red there. You can also hold down shift. Now, when I hold down shift, I have smooth stronger loaded. You probably just have smooth. Either way, you can just smooth Z intensity or you can smooth RGB or you can do both. So let's go back. I'm going to grab my standard brush here. I'm going to turn on Z add. I'm going to do a little bit of sculpting here and a little bit of uh, poly painting here. So I'm going to turn off Z add, turn on RGB, or I can just go to my paint brush here and change it to blue. And we've got a little bit of blue. We got a little bit of red. We got a little bit of sculpting on there. So if I hold down shift and I have RGB off for my uh, smooth brush, it's just going to smooth the surface and leave the poly paint completely alone. If I hold down shift and just do RGB, it'll just smooth the poly paint. And with that, it's just kind of just smoothing out that uh, underlying poly paint there. And it's going to leave the geometry alone. If I have both of them turned on, you can hold down shift, turn both of them on with shift held down. And now you can smooth the poly paint and the underlying structure. So either way, uh, for now, I'm going to hold down shift and turn on Z add. So I'm just smoothing out the RGB values here. So I'm going to go back into my paint and I'm going to turn off Z add. So if you're using the paint brush and you have a hotkey assigned, don't turn on Z add. If you're using, say, the standard brush and you turn RGB on, uh, feel free to do what you want or do what you want anyways. I'm, I'm not going to tell you what to do, but you can go through here and paint. And the first thing you might notice is you know, I'm kind of painting, but it's kind of low res. If you go in here, you're, you're, it's like really jagged. So what that means is what you're basically doing is painting on each individual vertice that makes up this object. If there's not a whole lot of vertices in here, there's not going to be a whole lot of resolution to your poly paint. So to, to change that, what you need to do, go to geometry here and you're going to subdivide to get more vertices to paint on. Because what you're basically doing is painting vert color. So now if I go in here with a green and I start painting, it's going to be a little higher resolution. If I hold down, if I do control D and subdivide again, and this time we'll do a purple, it's going to be even higher resolution. If I control D again, and now we're getting up into like nine ninety-eight thousand. Now you're going to see we're doing a pretty high resolution here. And of course, any stroke type, or drag rect or anything you want to do, you can go in here. So for example, uh, you can talk, hit L to toggle lazy mouse on and off. So you have you have lazy mouse available to you. You can go here to your transform menu. You can toggle X symmetry on and off, or you can go say the Y radial count and you can use radial symmetry to go ahead and poly paint. Uh, one of the other things we did was we made a star brush that, uh, or an arrow brush that we made. So if you use an arrow brush here and instead of Z add, you turn on RGB, you can now just drag out RGB arrows that you can paint whatever color you want, or you can change that stroke to a drag rect. You can drag them out change the color, drag those out. And of course the RGB intensity is 100. If I drop that down to like 15 and then drag over, it's only going to be like 15%. If I want to fill this object with a single color to say like replace all this with white and start over again, I can go over here to the color menu. I'm just going to drag this over here and we can choose a white color just by clicking and dragging in here or doing it in here. And we're going to do fill object. 
So we can fill that up. Now, because RGB intensity is set at 15, it's just gonna gradually knock that texture back. If you wanna just completely obliterate it, just crank that up to 100, fill object, and now it's pure white. So uh, if you wanna make that arrow brush, you, all you gotta do is like, make a drag rack stroke with a standard brush, grab uh, the arrow alpha here, make sure your RGB is selected, make sure you have a color selected, and then you just drag that out. Now, you're gonna see the focal shift is at zero, so it's gonna kind of fade out around the edges. If you wanna make it hard edges, there you go. You can make that negative 100 focal shift, and now you're good to go. Now, of course, you can do both. You don't have to have just RGB turned on. You can do RGB and Z add, and you can drag out a Z intensity and textures. So a lot of flexibility there. Another thing you might see is a, 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 sec, a separate color over here. So we tap that color and we say we make that green. Uh, now we have red and green loaded, so I can go ahead and paint with red and now I can hold down Alt and that's gonna paint with green. And because I have Z add turned on, whenever I hold down Alt, it does Z sub. So you can do uh, poking out red and then hold down Alt and do pushing in green. If you turn off Z add, and you know what, let's just change that to a dot stroke, no alpha. Now I can either paint with red and we have a little bit of lazy mouse on. You can kind of just paint that out. And we have focal shift at negative 100, so let's change that back to zero. You can kind of paint like so. And then we can hold down shift, and because we have RGB turned on for our smooth brush, we can kind of just fade that out with our smooth brush. We can ch now change that uh, to green by holding down alt. And now when we paint, we're painting with that alternate color. And I believe you have to have that alternate button turned on for uh, that alt to function correctly. So that's pretty cool. And that's really, that's the basics of poly painting. Pretty simple.